How's it going, guys? Difficult question for gastro for step one pediatrics TCK. Before we start, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Elman underscore medical, and HL man underscore medical links down below. I mean, Telegram links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And start the clip. Three month old boy born at 28 weeks gestation, two days, three bloody stools. Abdominal examination shows reduced bowel sounds. Laboratory studies show leukocytosis decreased by carbonate. Which the following most likely seen this patient? And we have some obscure X right here. You say, no fucking idea what I'm looking at. All right, well, let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, breastfeeding John does wrong fucking answer. This is going to be a kid who has difficulty attaching to the breast and decreased feeding. So if there is decreased passage of breast milk through the uh, early gastrointestinal tract, there can be increased proclivity for enteropatic circulation of bilirubin. So it's one of the causes of pathologic jaundice for 2CK. We can make this a lengthy discussion, okay? I can go into all the fancy details about pathologic versus physiologic jaundice. I have made other YouTube clips on this stuff. I'll link my pediatrics PDF below. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, breast milk jaundice, wrong fucking answer. So similar to breastfeeding jaundice, we're gonna have increased enteropatic circulation of bilirubin. So this is what's gonna go down. You're going to get a question for 2CK where you're able to eliminate physiologic jaundice because the kid is going to have one of the five criteria for pathologic jaundice. And you're going to say, well, we've had a diagnosis of exclusion where you've eliminated to get there. And we say breast milk jaundice, just the kid might have increased enteropatic circulation due to beta-glucuronidase in breast milk. So we're just going to try switching the formula feeding for 48 hours and see if that mitigates the jaundice. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, failure formation pleuroperitoneal membranes. Verbose answer choice, wrong fucking answer. So this is actually extremely buzzy and extremely high yield for congenital diaphragmatic hernia, okay? One of the highest yield diagnoses on USMLE uh, for GI slash pediatrics where they're going to give you a kid who has bowel sounds in the left hemithorax. You're like, what the fuck? Like, why would there be bowel sounds in the chest? It's because you have a congenital diaphragmatic hernia where you have herniation of the small bowel into the chest, okay? And they might say decreased bowel sounds in the abdomen. They might say an NG tube is visualized with the tip in the left hemithorax because the NG tube that went down into the stomach will have herniation of the stomach in addition to the small bowel up into the left hemithorax. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, increased anal tone, wrong fucking answer. First, a Hirschsprung disease, okay? So failure of migration of neural crest cells distally in the colon, and you're gonna have a bird's beak appearance on barium enema. So this is where you have increased anal tone. You need uh, neurons in the anus for there to be a relaxation, okay? so. Hirschsprung disease associated with Down syndrome. So Down syndrome, not just Hirschsprung, but also duodenal atresia. Okay, so bilious vomiting, double bubble sign. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, pneumatosis intestinalis, correct answer. That's what this x-ray is showing us here. So diagnosis is going to be necrotizing enterocolitis. It's just simply one of the diagnoses in hyperpremies you have to be aware of. So kids born prior to 37 weeks gestation, they're premies, okay? So premature neonates. Well, under 32 weeks gestation, we have increased propensity for even more obscure diagnoses, such as necrotizing enterocolitis, where the bowel can literally just become necrotic, okay? You can get uh, other conditions, such as retinopathy of prematurity or bronchopulmonary dysplasia if the kid's been exposed to oxygen, at birth as well. I've made other YouTube clips on those diagnoses. So pneumatosis intestinalis, if it's the first time you're hearing about it, you're like, what the fuck? Well, it's actually pretty basic for pediatrics, but that's just air in the bowel wall. Okay. That's what you're showing. That's what you're seeing on x-ray here. You don't need to be a radiology expert. You don't need to look at this radi at this uh, x-ray and say, obviously this is pneumatosis intestinalis. That's not what we're doing here. We're just eliminating to get there. That's what we're doing, okay? Decreased bicarbonate, you say, why is that the case? It's because of lactic acidosis in the setting of ischemia. So if you have necrotic tissue, you can get ischemia as well as 
uh, just sympathetic activation and decrease bicarbonate. Leukocytosis self-explanatory if you have an infection slash sir systemic inflammatory response center. Correct answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.